it's right, left, both, and start. Both, left, right, and off. So this is a rotary switch. This one in particular has 12 positions. It's very seldom that you'll actually need all 12 positions though. That's why if you take it apart, there's this little piece with a tab. If you click your switch all the way left, you can see these little numbers. You put the little tab to the right of the number you want positions. I want five positions, so I lowered it to the hole to the right of five. Now, if we click our switch, we have one, two, three, four, five positions, and we can't go further because of this little pin. I like to use these 12 position switches. I believe they have a 22.5 degree index angle, um, and they're a really standardized component, so I don't have to go searching for like three position switches and two position switches and five position, and um, it just keeps everything simple. So the wiring for this switch is pretty simple. You have this black wire right here, and this goes to ground. The wiring color doesn't actually matter, but it makes your life easier to have a convention. So we can put this end into the ground pin in the Arduino, and then the other end into this other pin right here. You'll notice on this, there's a circle of outer pins, and then there's a pin right here. If it has more than one pin here, that might mean it's a multi-pole switch, um, and it might only have three positions, but it has 12 outer pin positions and four inner poles. With that, basically just make sure you only use three of the pins um, and you like only use a slice of the switch basically. So now this ground pin can go into the one in the middle. This is the common. So if you think of your rotary switch um, as having the common in the middle and it's, um, I guess, fingers <laughs> or outer positions, basically the common and the outer will connect and that's basically what makes the switch positions happen. Like this switch, this switch, this switch, and this position. It basically connects the common to the outer pin and that's what triggers the switch. On this particular switch, there are numbers um, and that's really helpful. So you can just count up from number one to 12 and just connect these DuPont connectors I'm using five positions, so I only need five wires plus the ground wire, so six wires. You can then plug these in to whatever pins you plan on using. For this, I'll just start using these pins starting at 22. So now my wiring looks a little bit like this. Notice up here how we're actually leaving the top two pins open. This is because um, if we were to plug it into these two pins up here, it would be five volts. So just make sure you're starting at 22 instead of the five volt power supply. All right, so in the configuration. We're actually just going to add five buttons, one for each position of the switch, starting at pin 22. So the wires are connected on pins 22 all the way to 26, and so is the configuration. So then we can flash it using the little flash button right here. It finished, and we can go on to Moby Flighting. If it doesn't give you that dialog that says your Arduino needs flashing, you can always go up to Moby Flight modules right here, and that's what gets you to the dialog. So we are doing an input, um, but by default, we're in the output tab. So click this little inputs button right here, and we're gonna go straight into there. So for an ignition system in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, you can just type in off, make sure it's activated, because um, this is the off position of the switch. Click edit, and we're gonna figure this out. Don't need precondition or config reference. Go to input, and then under module, this is our only Arduino that's connected, and we want it on button one. This is the all the way left position. So this is what we're gonna be making. We're gonna make an off, right, left, both, and start switch, just like on the Cessna 172. 
In the past, I've always used FSU IPC offsets. They're kind of confusing and you have to install another software and everyone hates them and complains about them. So we're going to use Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 events. If we go to hubhop.mobiflight.com, we can search under the presets list and find what we want. So it's going to be an input. Um, it's not an output. I can tell you that much because we're telling it what to do. And it's going to be a magneto. So out of the gate, we have, I think, what we want. So magneto, both decrease, increase, left, off, um, right, and start. So all of these are actually what we want. Uh, let's click the off position, magneto off. And we can do two things from here. We can just copy this if we want to. Um, and we can paste it into Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 custom input. I mean, we can do that, and it should work because it's referencing this specific thing. Or you can do the drop down method. And the drop down method is the one I prefer because you can switch it pretty easily instead of having to rewrite this code. Um, and for example, if you deleted a character on accident, this code wouldn't work, but you can't delete characters in the drop down uh, system. So if we go to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 events, um, we can find what group we need. And the group right here is actually starts with the vendor, goes to the aircraft, and then goes to the system. The group starts with the vendor. The vendor is Microsoft. And you can even just type in M real quick um, and it Now, if we type in MIC for Microsoft, it'll give us all, it'll just jump right to the Microsoft events. We need Microsoft slash generic, then unsorted. So if we look through these events, we'll eventually find a Magneto right here. So this Magneto, both decrease, increase, left, and off. This off one is the one we want. This is all set up to perfection right here. Uh, you can see it's the same code basically um, as right here, magneto off and magneto off. We can even select off right here if we don't want it to be magneto one or magneto two. If we want to control both of them, we can do it right here. So this is both magnetos off. And in the Cessna, there's only one Magneto, so we'll just use both of them by default. Um, if you are in a dual engine airplane, then Magneto 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 could be connected, which is pretty cool. If you have like 8 engines, good luck. So we have this off position right here, uh, and we can click run, load up our flight simulator, and see where it goes. So it's all running. And let's see what happens. Let's test this out to see if it's, excuse me. Let's test this out to see if it's what we want. So if we rotate this switch all the way right, um, then turn our magneto t to like, let's say the left position and then turn it to the off position. It turns to the off position. So this is really cool. Um, out of the gate, the off position works. Let's get the rest of the positions working, and it's always good to do a test like right before so you don't have to change them all later. And now we can just duplicate this row. This is off copy, but actually right comes next. So go into the edit field right here, and the only things we have to change are this button and this event. So this button is instead of button one, it's going to be button two or position two. And this event is going to be instead of magneto off, magneto right. So we basically repeat this for the other switches, duplicate, and we can even just duplicate it more than once if we want to. Duplicate and duplicate, that gives us five probably. If it'll let us there we go so we have five positions 
this one is left, this one is both, and then this one is start. So you can just see in this input tab right here actually what button everything is on and we want it to go one, two, three, four, five, or whatever your devices are named. We want them to go in order. So switch um, left to button three, that's the third position, and we're going to have it magneto left. Same thing with both, click the hamburgers, button four, and magneto both. Button five, right here, and we'll have it magneto start. So now you can click run again, and let's see if it goes to our positions. So we have our switch here, it's right, left, both, and start. Both, left, right, and off. There we go. It looks like one of my connections wasn't very good, so it jittered a little bit. I redid that, and it's looking perfect. One of the perks to Microsoft Flight Simulator is that changing between start and both is actually on a timer. You can't change the position like you can with um, off and right and left. It's not immediate. Um, basically start starts a timer that holds the key down for two seconds and then goes to both. Uh, this is a little bit different from X-Plane. X-Plane, you say it's at start and then go right to both. It goes right from start to both instead of holding it down. I think it's just one of the things Microsoft Flight Simulator dumped down. The next topic in this course is rotary encoders, and I've already filmed a really good video about that. The link is in the description below. And the week after next week, I'm going to finally release my potentiometer video. I'd like to say a humongous thank you to David H, David L, Chris P, and Similar, the patrons of this channel. And I'd also like to thank Altimeter Motors for their continuous support. Have a fantabulous day, and we will see you two weeks from now with potentiometers.